Today, we're going to talk about writing tips from the masters. I'm Neil Christensen, author of Dark White and host of Book Talk Writers Group. Anyone who's been writing for more than about two seconds is always going to be eager to jump in and tell you all their secrets to writing, all the tips that you need to follow. And as I've said before, writing is an art. There's no one way to do anything in this journey. But when a best-selling author comes out and gives writing advice, people take it as gospel. There's no arguing with it. But you know me, I like to dig into that stuff. I recently learned that one of my heroes, Elmore Leonard, has a set of 10 writing tips. So when my writing mentor told me about this list, I was eager to see what he had to say. And I gotta tell you, I was not super happy. So today we're going to go through Elmore Leonard's writing tips and dissect them through the lens of Neil. Number one, never open a book with weather. I mean, this is funny on two counts when it comes to dark white. And I mean, come on, whatever happened to it was a dark and stormy night. But I think I get what he's saying. And I'm not going to disagree completely. You want to open your book with your protagonist in action, not a view of the sunset over the ocean. So I'll give that one a tentative thumbs up. Number two, avoid prologues. I mean, look, everybody says this, right? Every single writing person of any stature at all on this app and everywhere else tells you to avoid prologues. But the key word there is avoid. This is not a prohibition. Sometimes prologues can be really important. I tried to take the prologue out of Dark White, and I just couldn't. It had to be there. But I do not have a prologue in either of my two next novels. So avoid prologues. I'll give that a thumbs up, as long as it's not saying never use them. Number three, never use a verb other than said to carry dialogue. Really, we're going to do the dialogue tag thing? I, I, just, I just don't agree with this. I just don't agree with this at all. And it comes down to that word again, never. Said is the foundation of dialogue tags. It should probably be 80 to 90% of your dialogue tags when you use a dialogue tag, because don't forget, whenever possible, don't use one. But saying that said is the only one you should ever use, I just, I just disagree. If John and Sarah are sitting in a library studying and Sarah leans over and says, I think you should know I cheated on you. What? Johnny shouted. It's important there, right? Because they're in a library. They're supposed to be quiet. Johnny's reaction is not, what? Johnny's reaction is, what? I just, I could come up with a thousand examples. Yes, said is definitely going to be like your primary dialogue tag. But the word never here means that number four gets a big thumbs down. Five, keep your exclamation points under control. You are allowed no more than two or three per 100,000 words of prose. This is stupid. Yes, you should keep exclamation points under control. For sure. I get what he's saying. And certainly never do like exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Don't do that shit. I'm serious about this one. Don't do that. But two or three per 100,000 words? No, nope. Elmore, sorry, you're done. Not on that one. Eh, thumbs down. Number six, never use the word suddenly or all hell broke loose. I know what he's getting at here. You want to avoid cliche idioms or cliche descriptions. Things that just have lost all their meaning because they're used so often. Suddenly is weak. There are better ways to say that and have it have impact and action to it. And all hell broke loose is just cliche. It's just overused. It's, it'll feel flat. I give number six a thumbs up just because I get what he's saying. Number seven, use regional dialects sparingly. I agree with this a hundred percent. I think one of the most important things to teach, especially beginning writers, is not to try to phonetically spell out a regional dialect. If you've got a character in Boston don't spell out Pac as in P-A-H-K. If you want the character to say he pocked the con, the Harvard Yard, excuse my terrible accent, just say he parked the car in the Harvard Yard and then 
tell us that the character spoke with a thick Boston accent. The reader will know what to do with that. If you try to spell out the dialect, you're gonna, it's gonna be clumsy, it's gonna be hard for the reader to read, and unless you do it perfectly with like impeccable accuracy, it could really come off offensive. Thumbs up for number seven. Number eight, avoid detailed descriptions of characters. You know how I feel about this. I'm not gonna retread that. Last time I talked about this, I had to go off TikTok for a week. Number nine, don't go into great detail describing places and things. I feel like this is iffy. Don't go into great detail. I don't really know what that means. That's pretty vague. But for my writing, sometimes I do go into great detail because the atmosphere is really important. My books are atmospheric. They have an ambiance to them. I think generally speaking, just keeping overall description to a minimum is generally a good rule of thumb for writers. I don't know. This one I give kind of like a thumbs to the side. Number 10 is like, yeah. And then he says, my most important rule is one that sums up the 10. If it sounds like writing, I rewrite it. This is the gem of all of them. How often have you read a story, read a book, read a short story, and it just felt like the author was trying too hard? Remember, you want your reader to disappear into this novel. You want them to disappear into this world. You want them to forget they're reading a book. You want the whole world in front of them to disappear and have their mind and imagination just fall into the world that you're building. And if your writing doesn't do that, if your writing feels like you're trying to tell a story, your reader is never going to get there. So that's it. That's the 10 rules plus one from Elmore Leonard on writing. I'd say generally speaking, I agree with most of the things he says here, at least in principle, but there's a few that I really hate. And what's the takeaway from this? The takeaway is try the things you try, take the advice you hear, work with it, play with it. If it works, fantastic. If it doesn't, throw it away. There's no one way to write a book. There's no one way to tell a story. Writing tips and writing advice are great. They're really helpful. They've been helpful to me, and I know they're helpful to you. But this isn't gospel. You're telling your story. Your voice is your voice. So whether it's from me or one of the masters, take it with a pinch of salt. All right, go write something.